After you've selected your output resolution and determined your natives, the next is the input setup. On the input side, you're going to patch your sources accordingly. So our native SDI sources, those sources running 720p, are going to be plugged into our native input slot. Uh, this has eight BNC connectors with frame synchronizers if necessary to bring in all of your 720p native sources. We then are going to use our universal inputs to bring in a variety of other sources. In our case, we have a couple SDI sources that are running uh, 1080i. I also have an analog source uh, coming off of a computer, one off of a DVD player, and another video playback device. The first thing we're going to do is unmap those sources that we're not using. So we're going to come down and unmap, using the unmap button, these SDIs that are not being used. This will free up our input buttons for those sources that we are using. So I'm going to start by putting my video sources in. I'm going to go ahead and name everything first so that as I'm patching everything makes sense. So in the case of uh, our slot one here, I'm going to start with my input name and this might be camera one. And then my other SDI sources are playback sources. So we're going to call this VTA and VTB. You can name them obviously anything you want. It's a four character input. Now it doesn't matter which order you plug your sources into the input cards. We can remap any of the inputs to any place on the switcher that we choose. Very simple source setup. The system has automatically acquired those sources. Uh, we don't need to save the inputs at this time. The system will automatically make sure it has these sources sized correctly. If we decide we want to go in and create custom sizing later, we can go in to the setup menu and actually go into the sizing and positioning and make custom sizing and shaping for our sources. And we'll go back to that later. Next thing we want to do is patch the sources into the system so that they show up in the correct buttons. So we start with our camera one. We're going to map two and I'm going to select input one. I'm then going to select our next SDI source, map it to two, and map it to three. Now you notice right now that I have two plus and three plus. That means these sources have been mapped to more than one place. That's not necessarily desirable. So from the, the base system patch, I probably did not unmap them correctly. If I do get into this situation, it's very easy to correct by selecting unmap for these sources. You'll notice they turn yellow, indicating a good signal, but no location for them yet. And go back and do the map to, select input two, and button number three there. I'll then just keep mapping my sources accordingly. Okay. We may choose to map additional sources into the system, such as still stores. To do that, we go into our map buttons, select our inputs, and then where we want to place them. I'm going to go ahead and place my still stores on 11, 12, and 13. So I go to map, source, cut, other, still buffer one, still buffer two, and still buffer three. Oops, wrong place. Let me put this one here. I can now correct this by hitting unmap. This allows me to have my still buffers available to me for playback for logos, uh, whatever I happen to have captured during the show. I'm also going to add in a couple test patterns for setup here. So we go to our test patterns. Uh, for instance, my uh, Simpty bars, if I'm going to be striping some tapes, and maybe I want a grayscale in here for color matching. There again, everything can be mapped as we go through. We can unmap and remap. Nothing is written in stone here. It's all flexible and changeable. The last thing that I'm going to go ahead and map is my program return. So I'm going to map ME2 program return so that I can uh, select it on program or preview if I'm building more complex effects. I usually like to do that on both sides of the shift so that I always have it available. By using the universal input card, we can resize and reshape a source that's not completely filling our output. You'll notice our DVD 
is not completely filling. So what we can do is go into setup of the DVD source and go into sizing and scaling. Now in 4 by 3 aspect ratio, I've told the source it's an actual 4 by 3 input coming in. Obviously it's coming in NTSC, uh, or in this case 720 by 480p. Uh, it is truly a 4 by 3 source. If we use our fills, that will size the source accordingly. Now you notice what it's done by doing a size H, it's filling horizontally. If we do a fill vertical, you'll notice that we go back to the downsized version. Uh, the reason for that is that we're actually creating black on top and bottom. If I turn up the brightness here, you'll notice what is actually coming off of the DVD player. By selecting fill H, we're blowing off the top and bottom and sizing to the horizontal, which then fills the video raster. Now in a letterbox source, this is very effective. If we want to do a custom sizing, we can actually go to our knobs here and increase or decrease the size manually. You can see how that fill H zoomed into the center cut of the source. We also have additional uh, settings. Pan zoom, for instance, we can use the pan zoom and actually zoom in on the source and leave it in its 4 by 3 window. This is effective if you want to take a center cut from an HD source. We can also mask and we can uh, do a 16 by 9 mask for instance and chop the top and bottom off. We still have our, uh, now we have our 16 by 9 uh, active area here. Uh, so just a number of ways that you can size and shape the video source.